Hey guys, I have here two 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries. I wasn't planning on reviewing many more batteries in this category as they're all starting to look the same. There are some variations from time to time, but for the most part, it's the exact same plastic case and it's typically the same two or three combinations of cells and BMS. That said, these batteries sort of just showed up here. I didn't order them, I didn't ask for them, I didn't agree to do anything. They're just here, so we might as well take a look at them. This one is from Vatrer. We reviewed one of their batteries in the past and it was built exceedingly well. They did a great job in terms of build quality. However, we did have a small problem in getting their low temperature charging protection to work as described. We did get it working eventually, however, the response from their customer support was far less than desired. This battery is from Temgot. I've never heard of this brand name before. I don't know where they got my shipping information from. I did go back and search through my email and I did find an email, one single email from them back in February asking if I wanted to review their battery. But the interesting thing is the Amazon link they had sent me is now directing to a different battery and this 100 amp hour battery is nowhere to be found on Amazon. They do still sell it on their website, but for some reason it's no longer on Amazon. We're going to take a quick look at the exterior of both batteries and then jump straight to the teardown. We're going to skip the capacity test, not only to save time, uh, but also this battery is emitting a small smell of burnt circuit board and uh, I'm very hesitant to try actually charging the battery. Uh, so we're just gonna take them apart and see what we find inside. These batteries are both built in plastic cases that look near the same as I've noted. You can see we've got the uh, same terminals, the same terminal covers here. The only visible difference is that this one has a display so you can check the status of your battery. You can see we have controls for the charge and discharge and it's reading 70.2 amp hours so it's approximately at a 70% state of charge. Taking a look at the inside of each manual, they're near identical. This paper on the Temgot feels quite a bit thicker, just like the plastic bag. And if we go to the second page, it's, again, it's near identical. It's almost like one company takes something that's publicly available and just copies and pastes certain bits of information in the brain names. These discharge and temperature graphs of both pages here are exactly the same graphs. It's like they just copy and pasted the graphs from one another. All right, so I've got the lid of this one cracked. I just haven't pulled it off the whole way yet. And uh, I'm starting to break this one open here. Um, and this one smells really bad, like lithium battery. Uh, so I don't know what's in there, but I have a feeling it's going to get chucked out in the yard pretty soon. All right, I can't see anything in there, but oh my, that smells awful. And uh, uh, before we go any further here, I wanna check the voltage of this to see what it's actually at. Says so 13.2 volts, so that's pretty much a full charge. I don't know. I don't see anything bad down in there. I don't see anything bad at all. All right, here is the balance lead. Let's, uh, got 3.3, 3.3, 3.3, 3.3, and 3.3, so nothing is overcharged. All right, so I did take that battery outside. I'm gonna leave it out there overnight. Tomorrow, I'll discharge it completely. Um, take it apart outside to see if we can figure out whether or not anything's actually wrong with it. It's possible it's just, you know, bad smell from whatever factory it was assembled in. I don't want to take any chances and my health is more important than a battery. And just for transparency, I will note that the box this battery shipped in is in no way damaged. I don't see any dents or anything uh, that would indicate shipping damage to have damaged this battery. Uh, but we're going to move on to this one for the rest of the evening. Guys, look at all this wiring here. There are four conductors that feed this top display. They probably run to the BMS of this battery. Um, and look how they have them nested and bundled together here. There's one, two, three zip ties holding this bundle of wires together. And a large chunk of them are actually stuck to the epoxy or the uh, silicone that's holding this terminal on. Okay, so this battery has the same epoxy board case. You can see the lid I cut off there. Wrapped in the same heat shrink, I did notice some differences. There's not as much foam padding on the side uh, and the silicone around it is a different color. Um, this actually contains a JBD brand BMS in here. We have a pair of number eight silicone insulated wires going from the battery to the BMS and then from the BMS to the uh, main terminal of the battery. One interesting thing to note is how they coiled up the temperature sensor here and they just have it attached to the epoxy board with some silicone. All right, so those two thick wires on the bottom right of the BMS here are going to a thermal switch, which I found underneath of the epoxy board. 
so this will be used for over temperature of the battery if the battery were to get too hot under a fault condition. The balance leads are nicely insulated here with some spiral wrap going up the center of the battery and they're terminated with ring terminals here on the terminals of the battery themselves. Uh, they use some of these nuts with nylon inserts, these locking nuts. They do not have a serrated flange, it's a flat flange. Um, so I don't recognize the cell, I don't recognize the vent style or anything like that. Here is a quick shot of the QR code. There's not really much information to go on by it. Uh, just appears to be a serial number. I will look that up online and see if I can find anything. Uh, I also noticed on the side of this battery there appears to be a MAC address. Now batteries don't have MAC addresses and this BMS does have a Bluetooth module built in. There is a phone app you can get for it. Um, so I assume that's going to be the MAC address of the Bluetooth. And I also see this does appear to be a 100 amp rated BMS. So it is properly rated for the load. All right, so here is the battery, the Vatra battery from last night. Um, it was out on the porch most of the night with the lid off. I did discharge it this morning. I pulled out 62 amp hours before the BMS shut down. Um, I then disassembled it outside and I let it sit there in the sun. It was about an hour or two, I'd say. And most of the smell is gone. There's still a very faint smell. Um, I don't smell it anywhere on this battery. I don't see anything leaking. Uh, there's nothing to indicate that this battery is in any way damaged or compromised. One place I did notice the strong smell was on the sheathing of the insulation here, this heat part right here. Uh, if I grab it, it's actually very sticky and I can't tell if that's stickiness from some sort of electrolyte leakage um, or that's just because there is a piece of strapping tape over it. Uh, it doesn't feel like strapping tape glue. It kind of feels questionable, but I cannot say with certainty one way or the other. I just know that that seems to be the area where most of the odor is coming from. That area of the cable lines up with this part of the battery here. You can see where the strapping tape is that was holding it down. And uh, I don't know if you can see down there, but you can see some of the residue. Again, I can't tell if that's strapping tape glue or not, but look how kind of like slimy it is. Um, the strapping tape I've used in the past the glue is very strong and it doesn't slide around like that. So again, this is pure speculation. I can't say with certainty, but that is where the odor is coming from. I did pull this back too and I inspected the entire corner of the cell here and there is no damage at all. There's no sign of moisture or electrolyte. This is a very similar BMS to some of the other batteries they use. Uh, it's model number PCM L05S100-G23. So we can see the balance leads are nicely protected with the same type of spiral wrap as the other battery. Uh, this BMS does come with two temperature sensors. Both temperature sensors run to the side of the battery and are under the same piece of silicone. You know, I don't know why you would run two temperature sensors that way. You could put one temperature sensor on each side of the battery or one on the top of the battery. But no, they have those going to the exact same point of the battery. And here's a shot of the QR code. These are not cells I recognize again. However, they are definitely different cells than the uh, Temgot battery. So there's no way those discharge graphs in the instruction manuals are correct because we've got two completely different cells here and they're going to have different characteristics. There is just no way they can be identical in every single aspect. And one thing to talk about here that's really a concern with the Temgot battery as well um, is just the way these are, these are fixed together. And you can see both of them are using a wrapping of the strapping tape. And this strapping tape is very strong tape, but it doesn't fix it in a solid, you know, a solid form. And the primary concern with that is the rigid bus bars. These are solid bus bars that do not have any way uh, to give or bend if the battery were to expand and contract. So you'll see this bus bar here that I've been using on my batteries, not only does it have this little lump in the middle, it's comprised of many layers. There's about 50 or 60 layers to this bus bar, which gives it a lot of flexibility and you can see how easy that bends. So what's going to happen when these cells start to expand just from normal use or age and all they're held together with is the strapping tape they're going to move just a little bit. Now these cells here look perfectly nice. They're perfectly straight and spaced out. They do have some foam between. I see foam on the top and foam on the bottom holding them apart from one another. Uh, but once this expands even a little bit, this bus bar isn't going to be able to give and it's going to put that force, transfer that force directly down to the terminal of the battery. And not only are these terminals sealing up the battery, they're also the insulator between the terminal and the case. And you don't want that to short out and you don't want this to leak. Both of those are dangerous and could result in a failure or a fire. Now, if we look at the Vatra battery here, it's built the same exact way. In fact, these look like the same exact bus bars, um, but these ones have expanded a little bit. 
And maybe you can see that in the video that the bottom is expanded more than the top. Uh, so looking at the battery here, the bottom of the battery is at eight and one quarter inches exactly. The top of the battery is at eight and it's a little bit less than one eighth of an inch. So what's that, like three thirty seconds maybe? So that's more than an eighth of an inch of expansion that has occurred on the bottom of these batteries. And maybe it was built that way, I don't really know. That difference in spacing bottom versus top is being exerted, that force is being exerted on these bus bars and that is not good because that force is going to transfer down to these terminals. And like I said, that's not only the seal of the battery, it's also the insulator to the case. So in the past, I really haven't made much of a big deal about the use of solid bus bars. I typically point out when there are flexible bus bars, but I think we're gonna start docking points when we review these batteries and we see solid bus bars combined with strapping tape like this, because that's just not, in my personal opinion, my personal non-expert opinion, um, that is just not a good way to build battery packs. So, all right guys, so please let me know what you think. I can't really recommend purchasing of the VATRA battery uh, with that strong odor and just sitting next to it, I can still smell it a little bit and that's not good and it's not healthy to be breathing in and I don't know why it smells like that. So for those reasons, I cannot recommend somebody purchasing this battery. The Tem got one, but there's not really any problems with it. However, uh, there's still the concern of these solid bus bars on the top. And I just, I think there are some better options out there on the market. Uh, so yeah, I'd love to hear what you guys think. If you think I missed anything or I'm being too critical of these batteries, please do let me know. Uh, hit that like button before you go and thanks for watching.